Hi, my friends. We're here in St. Cloud, Minnesota at North Star Lodge number 23 in uh, a beautiful September summer evening. Lodge just ended here and we had a fine get together here this evening. Uh, my name is Ed Alpus. I'm the Grand Lodge Education Officer, the Grand Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons of Minnesota. This is our first education video for our education committee. I want to mention to you that while these videos are made with the permission of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Minnesota, uh, you should know that nothing in these videos constitutes any official position of the Grand Lodge of Minnesota, uh, any of its uh, lodges or any of the members of uh, the Grand Lodge of Minnesota or Master Masons in our jurisdiction at all. Uh, when we speak about Masonic education, we do the best job we can to represent uh, Masonic education to the best of our ability, but we speak only for ourselves, uh, those of us who do the videos. Uh, and as long as we're having our first video for our education committee, I would like to mention something about Masonic education since that's the purpose of these videos. In uh, Masonry, we hear about that it's the internal and not the external qualifications of a man that should render him worthy to be made a Mason. When uh, we think of the internal and the external qualifications, sometimes people think of different things of, that they represent, and that's not necessarily always what Freemasonry says it represents. So what I'd like to mention to you is what the internal qualifications are and what the external qualifications are. Uh, the internal qualifications, according to Masonry, are four of them. Uh, the applicant must come of his own free will and accord. That's the first one. His application must be purely voluntary, uh, to which he's not been introduced, induced by the uh, persuasion of friends. Secondly, that he must not be influenced by mercenary motives. Third, that he must be prompted to make the application uh, because of a favorable influence or a favorable opinion con con conceived of the institution. And finally, that he must be resolved to conform with cheerfulness to the established usages and customs of the fraternity. The external qualifications, according to Freemasonry, are five of them. The moral, the religious, the physical, the mental, and the political. First, the moral, that the candidate only is qualified for initiation, who faithfully observes the moral law and leads a virtuous life, so conducting himself as to receive the reward of his own conscience as well as the respect and approbation of those around him. The religious. Freemasonry is very tolerant and uh, respects all, creed, all creeds, but it, but it does require that every candidate for initiation shall believe in a supreme being and, protect, and the protecting power of that supreme being in a future life. The physical, these refer to the sex, age, and bodily conformity of a man. The candidate must be a man of a certain minimum age and be physically sound. The mental, this division excludes all men who are not intellectually qualified to comprehend the character of the institution and to partake in its responsibilities. The political, this relates to the condition of the candidate in society, that is, being a man freeborn of lawful age, etc. So there it is, the internal and the external qualifications of a man to be made a mason. Uh, I uh, thank you for the time that you've spent watching this video. This is, as I mentioned, the first video that we're having uh, for uh, Masonic Education on YouTube. I hope that you'll check back on YouTube. Uh, we plan to have these on a weekly basis, and hopefully they'll be getting better as we go along. Uh, I wish you best fraternal greetings and best wishes for you and everything that's good and wholesome in the future. Thank you.